Today our focus is going to be focusing on value but not using black and white or uh, raw umber and white. Usually if you're going to focus on just values you'll get rid of color and just use one color and white or black and white. Um, here we're going to use a limited palette of ivory black, some kind of red, alizarin crimson, cad red medium, cad red light, one of those reds, and cad yellow light, and of course white. And that limits our color selection but still gives us color to work with and we get a feel for what we can mix with these colors as well as being able to just focus on value in this painting. Now today's lesson is going to be focused on values using muted color. By muted color we're going to take out the blue and just use ivory black. I'm going to use cadmium red. Here it's either medium or deep. You can you can use the alizarin crimson. You don't even have to buy the cadmium. You can buy a cadmium hue, cad red deep or, or medium. Sometimes you can't find medium. You just uh, buy cad red or the cad red deep. So ivory black, alizarin crimson or cad red deep, one or the other, and then cad yellow light. And what I want to do before, of course white, what I want to do before we start the painting is just show variations. If I start with the Cad red deep and yellow first. And we get a cad red, kind of a red orange, orange, and then a yellow orange. And that's a pretty strong, I mean they're both cadmium, so it's it's pretty strong. What changes then, and I'm gonna have a little bit of black and everything. When I use just three primary colors or three colors, I will typically, you know, have one or two colors dominate in mixtures and then just a tiny bit at least of the third one. Maybe not much at all. But that way everything is slightly muted and towards the end I can decide where I want stronger color and just use one or two colors. But hold back on your strongest color till towards the end. So now with the ivory black, I'm going to add a little bit of white and then add the cadmium red deep and it becomes a violet. Again I can go more towards the red for red violet and more towards the black for somewhat of a bluish bluish violet. We have to think value too. I mean the violet that we mix has to fit in to the value in our painting. You know, is it a what plane does it belong to with the four planes? How how the value relates to the other big and we're talking big shapes. Don't worry about the smaller shapes, which we'll add at the end. The small details or small little dark sunlights. But keep the big pattern that we'll start with in the in the uh, thumbnail and uh, then go from there. Now my greens, which in the reference has green trees in it, but I'm going to use a lot of green in there. Just green objects, uh, some green to mute some red. So I'm going to use a lot of a lot of green. So here's my yellow green. And the more I go towards yellow, of course the yellow really sticks out but there's still enough black in there that it's a green and it doesn't make a bad green at all. Uh, it's a pretty good green if I get blue and cad yellow down here it's definitely stronger because we're not using black down here but that still works pretty good and if I add viridian which I'm not going to in the painting but then it becomes not only real strong, it becomes kind of unnatural looking. It's not a natural looking green. So we don't want that green. Then I can go more towards a bluer green. Which gets pretty muted again because it's we're using black. But it's still going to be a cool green. It's going to be just like using blue except it's going to be a lot more muted. doesn't have the punch but it has other there's a color harmony there from 
using the black. Of course, this doesn't have any black in it. So I would, if I added a little bit in there, again, just to knock it down a little bit. What you don't want to do with the black is just use it for dark. In other words, if you're if you have all your colors on your palette and you have a black sitting there, use the black for greens or violets, uh, muted colors, but don't use it for black for shadow. Just black and you know stick it in the shadow because there's no color in it. Here, it is a color in the sense because it's our primary blue. We have the red and yellow, so I'm going to use it just like I would use a use a blue. But if you were to use black in your normal palette with all your colors, however many you have, don't just use it to make dark. It tends to look photographic and opaque. You have to have more color in your shadows. So that's what we're going to use. And again, the purpose is to focus on value because my colors are going to be limited in a sense. I don't have to decide what color to use. I'm going to use, in every mixture, I'm going to use yellow, red, and black. In every mixture, and white. Know that I don't have anything without at least a tiny bit of white in it. So my color mixture is reduced as far as the anxiety of what, the, what color do I have to pick. And it, the colors are going to harmonize. What I do want to stay away from is getting equal amounts of two or three because then you're going to get mud. Every time I mix something, one color, maybe two, is going to dominate. Like if I want an orange, the yellow and the red will dominate. And usually, if it's a yellow-orange, the yellow will dominate. Red-orange, the red will. Or if it's a green, either the black is going to be the dominant color or the yellow. And then a you know, tiny bit of red. So every time you mix something, the third color will always be the complement. It will always be the color that grays. And again, here, black is not just used to gray everything, which is the other bad use of black. Every time we want to gray something, we just throw black in it. Now, I would do that if I was mixing an orange and I wanted to mute the orange because my black is blue, and blue is the complement of orange. But again, if I'm mixing a violet, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to gray it. If I'm mixing a green, I'm going to add cad red. To gray it and mixing a orange I'll add a black to gray it because black is my blue here so I'm trying not to think of it as black and there are some things that will you know if you try and paint a bright blue sky with this mixture your sky is going to be very very muted be more of a violet to blue violet but the muted sky in this case would make the boat pop out a lot more than I'm going to do here so we'll see how that works in a minute here is my thumbnail, and you can see in the photograph I got rid of the buildings in the background. I'm going to have one low building. I'm taking just the kind of reddish-orange bottom floor of the building on the left. And then in my drawing on the canvas, I added a couple of small buildings over here. But most of the buildings, I eliminated too much detail, too much stuff going on there. And the dark tree allows the white boat to pop out. My focus is the boat and the stuff underneath. I like junk underneath boats. This was in Greece. So the buildings, they don't have anything to do with the boat. And all they will do is clutter it up. And in our painting, we want to get to the focal point, get to the heart of what we're after, and simplify everything else. So I simplify the trees. A couple of buildings here, but they have to be dark enough that the white sticks out. These are going to be my lightest lights. And they are in the painting, too. But I'm going to darken this even more, darken the buildings and darken the sky. Those areas are still going to be a light, but I'm going to reduce them in value to slightly darker so the white boat pops out. My cleanest colors are going to be in the shadow of the boat, the sunlit part of the boat. Everything else is going to be fairly muted. By that I mean I'm going to add more of all three of the colors in there. So I'm done with the thumbnail so I don't really have to use it anymore but I use the thumbnail to do the drawing because that's where I've, I made the changes. I don't care for my shape here of the tree it's too square but I can fix that but draw from the thumbnail otherwise you kind of defeat the purpose for even doing the thumbnail. I want to watch my lines a little bit these angled lines going down make everything slide downhill. These are angled because all this stuff is at an angle. 
the building should not be that much of an angle, so I got to straighten this. Uh, one reason I wanted the building down here, which of course there is building there, is that it's a light building and it contrasts these dark shapes. And then I have dark shadow of the boat, which is pretty light, so I'm going to use a darker dark of the tree to make that pop out. So I'm thinking abstractly, shape-wise, and I'm trying to push contrast. So dark against light, light against dark. So push the contrast as much as possible. And I'm looking at the abstract shapes of, the, of, of these. The size here, the size of the boat, the size of this darker dark, the shape and size of the trees, the background tree sky, and so on. So I've broken it up into about eight, nine big shapes. And how I arrange those shapes is what's going to make the composition work or not. And then the contrast will suggest the light. And that's what I got in the thumbnail, the contrast. So as I paint, I don't put the thumbnail away totally. I still have it over there because it's easy to lose the shadow pattern sometimes. So if I could glance at it once in a while, I will use it to get back on track. But that should be kind of the key things we're after. Find the shadow pattern that creates the design. Keep that design throughout your whole painting. And by keeping it, I mean keep the contrast between those big shapes and big values. How we technically push or pull the brush or how great our color looks is really secondary. To be able to hold a design, get contrast, Make your paint, your colors work to suggest the light. So I'm going to mix some greens. And the sun is coming this way. So it's not too much at the side. Or definitely not in front. It's kind of behind me a little bit to the side. So the trees aren't going to, I'm not going to block in darks. There is a tree right up in there. And the darks are small. So that means most of the tree will be light. So I will get um, black and white and then the yellow. So there's going to be enough yellow in there, it's going to look sunlit. And I'll still keep it somewhat dark. And that's dark, pretty dark. I mean it's uh, dark for a light. Now I'm going to add a tiny bit of the red. I don't need to add much, but just a little bit. That's a little darker yet than what I had, so I might uh, lighten it with a little bit of white. And I've got the big shape of the boat. There's a bunch of tall stuff coming off the boat that doesn't interest me. So I'm going to leave some of that out. And I don't know anything about boats. Which is kind of nice. It's like flowers. I don't know anything about flowers. But that way I can just see them as shapes of color. Same thing here. It's just shapes of value and color. I want a few sky holes. And that's a fairly strong green considering it's black. Another good set of colors when you're using black is uh, earth colors. So black, yellow ochre, maybe Indian red. Some people use burnt sienna and yellow ochre and black and white. And the whole purpose again is just to keep your focus on the values and have your color kind of muted. When you can get very nice muted color harmony, it works real well. And by muted, I don't mean gray or muddy. Gray is actually, can be actually kind of good. Now I want some more distant trees, so I'm adding a bit more black. But again, there's enough yellow in that black that it doesn't look black black. It looks blue. I mean, that looks very blue next to these greens. So I'm going to push that back further. And I will break up the shape of the bigger tree with this lighter, cooler green. Now for my sky, and I'm going to use, use a lot of brushes in this painting because colors can get very muted. So I'm going to use white and black. And I can add a touch of yellow, but the, the sun is behind the viewers, not in front. So I really can't use yellow. I'm going to get the right value with black. And I can mix it next to the tree so it gives me a better idea. And I'm going to add some cad red. And it's going to be kind of a violet sky. And this will read as blue. If I get my values right, 
as I get everything else blocked in, the strong shadows, your mind's going to tell you that's a clear blue sky because of the values and shapes of shadows. Now, if I, if I get my values off, and I don't get my darks dark enough, and I don't have a strong shadow pattern with that real strong contrast, then it will look like a cloudy day, and the sky will look very gray. So within the picture plane, if we get the values right, and the shapes right, and the contrast working, then no matter what color we use in the sky, it should read as a sunlit, you know, clear blue sky. And I've been being kind of careful with these shapes. My sky is color here is pretty thick, because it has to cover up that green just a little bit. But just like the black and the green reads as blue, the uh, black in the sky is going to read as, as blue also. But there is no blue in it. It's black with a little little cad red. And I just got a little distance here. Obviously I'm not looking at anything in the reference when I do this. I am looking at the there's a big tree back in here behind the boat. But that's where I'm getting my value for my light and where I'll get my value for my darks. I'll add a few darks now and I will mix it right next to the light tree. A little bit in it. So the black, yellow, maybe a, and well, of course a touch of red. The only thing I didn't put uh, all three in is the sky. I put just the black and red. But everything else I went all three. Maybe not very much. But just enough to get everything muted so I can decide where I want my strongest color. Now this is going to be more black and red, a little bit of yellow, because the yellow lightens it too much. So I'm kind of creating my own shadow pattern. In my thumbnail, my sh the trees were just part of the shadow pattern. So my painting, I have to break it up a little bit more. So I'm going to put the shadows on the other side. So I'll have to lighten this up later. The sun is coming from the right. So I'm going to create my own shadow pattern here on the left side. It also gives me more value contrast between the background trees and the uh, foreground trees. And I'm placing some darker darks next to the light, lightest part of the boat. Now I'll go back to the light again and get rid of this shadow part. A lot of times when you paint over a darker value, it really helps to uh, scrape it a little bit. Now, it's reading pretty dark, but I've got good value relationships, so while the lights are kind of dark, the darks are even darker. So it still works because the value or the contrast is there. Now, you can go too dark, but you can raise all the values darker or lower them darker or raise them higher. So you can kind of control how dark the whole painting is or how light the whole painting is. Now I'm going to get the, the shadow on the boat and the more I can just keep it one value in the shadow for a long time the better. So I'm going to go blue and red, a little bit of yellow. Again all three. It's pretty obvious what you need to pick for each area. So I've only got three choices. And I'm going to have all three and everything, so my choices are which one dominates. You know, my reflected light will be the cad red and yellow, obviously. I don't want too much cad yellow in the reflected light. In other words, the light hitting the ground, bouncing up into the shadow. Because cad yellow is just too strong to be thrown in the shadow, so it'll have a lot of cad red into the yellow, so more of a reddish orange. And I just want to be careful here of this has a weird angle thing there, so I'm just going to make it straight. Simplifies a simple boat here. Maybe if I knew more about boats, I would understand why that is at an angle. But to me, to put that at an angle makes it look like a bad drawing. So There's 
Now this looks fairly gray when I get a warm white, white and cad yellow and cad red, touch of black, this will look bluer. Again that temperature contrast will make that appear a lot bluer. So let's get that in there now. This will be, and I'll mix it right next to the shadow. And it is white. I'm going to be careful not to get too much color. It's easy to get. I don't want it to look red or yellow or orange. I want it to look like a warm white with a touch of, I'll add a touch of the shadow to get the black in there. And there's a door there. I'm going to paint around the door for the most part. I don't have to have the draw of the door drawn in there perfectly. Just leave a little spot so when I do put the dark, it has something to grab hold of, and it'll overlap the light a little bit. And I'll probably come back with white and a little cad yellow and just put a stroke or two in here, to pop it a bit more. But this is a little more muted, but still, it's very light. And very warm. There's a touch more yellow in there. But there is some black in there and there is some cad red. And if I can hit this clean white in here fairly early, I can keep it clean. If I wait till towards the end to get this in here, it's going to get you know, harder to keep it cleaner. Too much color gets thrown around. And if I go too far here on the edges, not a big deal because I have to paint the background, which will force me to cut in a little bit. Now I'm going to get more cad red, touch of yellow, not as much black for these shadows, or like the door. So it's kind of a reddish shadow. Anytime you get some color in the shadow, it's going to read better. Yeah, even if we don't use black, we're using you know blue and cad red and orange to get the shadow, we can get it way too too dark and it becomes kind of colorless. And that's more black. I'm going to add a bit more red. And then the windshield. And it's really a lot easier now for me to focus on value because my colors, again, not much choice. But what I can focus on and what will make it work better is the contrast. Now my light here, the minute I get wiggly like that, it's going to make the boat look too, not straight, you know, like it's made of something that's kind of wiggly. So I want to keep that smaller and thinner, and I've got a lot of this dark mixed up. So I can come in and carefully cut into that shadow and thin that down a little bit. The width of that line, not the, not thinner paint just a thinner width. Now I want to get the reflected light in there. There's a lot of color in the shadow. It doesn't show as much in the photograph, but there's a lot of orange over here. And maybe some more red over here, reddish orange up there. So I'm going to mix a uh, cad red. and yellow. Again, I don't want too much cad yellow, so just a little bit. It's going to be more on the red-orange to red side. Red's not really warm, but um, when I put it next to blue, or in this case black, it looks warm because it is warmer than 
than blue or black. So color is kind of relative. When I put it next to something that's cooler, it's going to look warm. So I don't have to get real warm at this reflected light. Just a tiny bit. The light hits, in this case, the inside of the boat and bounces up in that uh, overhang. Houses are the same way when you have an overhang and a sunlit day. The sun hits back up in there and really gets warm. Now I'm going to get more red. I'm going to get red with a touch of black. A little bit of yellow, not much for in here. There is a lot of light. And if you look at it carefully enough, there is that kind of reddish violet in there. And the same thing up underneath here. And I don't see it as much in the photograph in there, but I know it has to be there. So, but I start with the cool color, the black and a little bit of red. It makes kind of a violet, and that's what keeps it in the shadow. Then I can add the reflected light, the warmer color. But without the warm or the cooler color, the reflected light doesn't do anything. It just kind of sits there. You know. This is straight black. Like in a, if I was using blue, I would come back with some straight blue. But it's not as effective because it just lacks color. So I'm going to add just a touch of red to it. So it'll always be kind of a violet instead of a, a bluish effect. It's tempting to reach for the blue. I see the real cool color in the boat or the blue sky. But you're going to get a harmony with the black, red, and yellow. That really is very effective. And it helps us also to focus on value. One of the reasons to do this too is to get us away from copying the photograph. I really have no desire when I'm doing these colors to copy what I see. You know, when I start I'm already resigned to everything's going to fit into this color scheme. These colors I'm using I can't try and match the color I see. Now I'm going to get the red and black. A lot of red, a lot more red than I think. Touch of yellow, not much yellow. And I'm going to get this underneath here. Now that's very grayish. I want a bit more red. Get a reddish color. So adding more red. Touch of yellow, but not much. Got to be careful with the yellow in the shadow. It can really kill the temperature. And this cannot be as dark as underneath the boat. Underneath the boat is the darkest. I'm going to add a bit more black over in here. Now I can chop in color. Let's get some red, a little bit of yellow without any black and chop into this blacker area here. Maybe a bit more red and yellow red in here. Slightly warmer, but it's still going to be cool compared to the light area. And that's the key. As long as my shadows are cool, compared to the light area, it'll work. Because warm and cool is relative. I want a little bit of change value-wise between this shadow on this side and that shadow on that side. Because the form is changing, so there has to be a value change. There also has to be a value change between the flat part of this kind of deck on the back in the vertical part of the boat. So I will add anything of just slightly darker value. It doesn't even have to have much of black and it could be more red. And I am going to get a little bit of a value change. Right there. So now this is slightly darker and that's lighter. Okay, now I need to get uh, some other areas going. This is too small here. Just spread that out. And I'm using pretty thick paint, especially in the lights, so that allows me to kind of mess with it. If I get too thin and I mess with it, I lose the value. So keep your lights thicker. Now for underneath here, there's the lighter darks of the stuff, which I've done in the thumbnail. Well, I, you can see some of it. Lighter shadows in there with the darker shadows. And it's going to be, again, some variation of red with yellow, yellow with red, and then add black. 
which of course is the blue. So here's yellow, red, kind of dominating. There's some black in there already, so I'm going to stop there. And there's something here. I'm going to have that something holding up the boat. I might add a bit more red and a tiny bit of black. Change up the color slightly for right here. i got to have some greens down here too. There's going to be a bucket here which has light on it. I like all this junk underneath here. It's very effective for you know spots of color. I've got a bluish now this is just black with a tiny bit of red in it, but it looks blue next to everything else. Now I'm going to go more red. I'm going to get a stronger red. Get a little bit of the yellow and black that's already mixed up. And let's get some stuff laying this way. That's a bit too light and reddish, so the red pops out too much. So add a bit of yellow and... And I might get a bit more yellow and then add the black to that. I've gone red, red with a little bit of yellow and black. And now I'm going more yellow with a little bit of red and a little more black. And it's very subtle, but you can see more red, more yellow. There's some black in all of that. Now I'm going to get more black, but not real dark yet. Again, my value here is the lighter shadows underneath here. And some of these lighter shadows will have sunlight on them. But that's for later. Now there's some tires, which I'm using black for. Now that's sunlit, I think. Might have to add a little yellow to it. And there's tires. I've taken these three mixtures, and right now I have more black. Now I'm coming back with more red. There's more yellow. So we've got yellow, red, black. Using those three colors, making one dominate. All of these colors have all three in it. There's some boards here. And I'm going to cut into all this lighter stuff with the dark. And my dark, again, it'll have all three colors, just like everything else, but, you know, 80%, 90% black and red. So here's my dark down here, just because I'm, well, I could put it up there next to, I'll put it up here next to the colors. Red and black, tiny bit of yellow. And the yellow just kind of keeps it harmonized. So everything has all three in it. You know, there's a boat underneath here, but that's too, there's, well, there's one here too, but that's too small and too picky. It's surrounded by too much junk. So I'm going to keep it simple. And this dark will really create a lot of contrast within the shadow. And hopefully make the boat really pop out. Remember to try and have enough paint mixed up that you don't have to stop because that can kind of really kill the painting, just having to stop and remix. Now this is a bunch of junk here, so I'm going to put in a few dots and dashes of dark. I'm not trying to render anything, I'm trying to paint around the lighter shadow. But if I get real subtle with the colors, like this being more, this is almost black, it looks kind of greenish. This is more yellow with red and black. This is more red with yellow and black. And uh, these are more reds too. And then the black almost by itself just to make that barrel look real blue. So I want to come in here. There's a long pole which is a nice diagonal that I want in here. And that's really a good composition element that just pulls you in there. And then the uh, ladder, which I will have in the sunlight. I'm going to have it warmer. This will be warm and cool. Let's start with the cool first. Black, little bit of yellow and red, not much. What I can do ahead of time too is mix a, without white, mix a uh, yellow and red and orange. Then I can lighten it if I need to or keep it darker. But that way I have it, you know, already mixed. It kind of saves time. And you would think, well, you might as well just squeeze that in orange, but I'm using the same three colors when I, you know, when I mix that orange, I'm still using the red and yellow that I already have. So it's not like adding a tubed color of an orange. That would be a totally different color because the cad orange is made differently than the cad red and cad yellow mixed together. Now I'm going to, for the sunlit, I've got yellow here. And right now everything has all three in it so I can reach up here and get a little red. Um, 
and then reach over here in this violet and get a little black. But I want a little sunlit. So this is the yellow, tiny bit of red and black, and of course a lot of white because that's light, but there's some sunlight on that pole there and sunlight right there. And get a shadow underneath of it. Yeah, and I could spend a lot of time chopping in these darks and lights. Dark there. And I'm just randomly, I'm not trying to render anything. I know the shadow has to be underneath there. A uh, little accent between the tires. A lot of negative painting too, cutting into these things to create shape. Now there's a shadowed blue barrel, and the best I can do for blue, and it's a little hard at first because you think, gosh, that blue would really pop out there nicely. But this will pop out. This is straight black, some white, get the right value. But it's going to have not the exact same effect as adding blue, but that does pop out. From everything else. So I could add a touch of straight red somewhere, a spot or two, to also make it work a little bit better. And I will get some, I stick it with just straight black now. I'm going to get straight black with a little white, or a lot of white, to get it lighter. And again, this barrel will stick out a bit more because it's a cleaner black. And everything else has a little bit of the other two colors. Then I'll go back to my dark. Again, no white, just black and red, tiny bit of yellow. And that's these dark accents in here that really make this pop out. Anyways, I'm going to use now a couple of stronger colors, uh, red and yellow. And it'll still have some black in it, but not much. And lighter. This will be sunlit. Enough black to make these look cans look kind of rusty. Or I'll have to have the shadow slightly different angle. But here's some things with a little more sunlight on them, or with sunlight on them. The other stuff doesn't. And again, go back to the dark accents. With this much sunlight, there's going to be a lot of dark accents. And that really makes things pop. Now I want to get to the ground. And I don't have to fill everything in. I just want a suggestion. I can even leave a lot of this, although it's not part of the color scheme. But I want an orange and black. So if I start down here, which already has all three in it. So I'm already fairly muted. But I will get Cad Yellow, Cad Red Deep, and I'm mixing up quite a bit. So, And then add the black from over there. So even though it's sunlit, there's going to be black in it too. And that's a little too cool. Probably got a bit too much black. Now too much black and yellow, of course, will look real green, so I have to have enough red in it. But red is, the red's kind of cool, so I have to have enough yellow in that. And I'm going to cut in around these shadow shapes. There's some sunlight, which I real effective. I have a spot there spot there. I get a little smaller brush. I don't want all these spots to be the same size and shape. Spot down there. That's like you're looking through the boat to the other side. Now I don't want this all look the same color, so I'm going to add a bit more yellow and then a touch of black. And it's going to give it a bit of a greenish feel, but not much. Again, I have the red in here too, so it doesn't get real green. But a little bit green, just to break up the color. 
And that's all I'm going to do in that. And now I want to touch up a little bit in the buildings and then some details around the boat. I went ahead and just finished off the big flat areas around the boat. I wanted some kind of reddish orange roof and house actually to offset the green. So again, this is the Cad Red Deep, a little bit of yellow and some black. This is uh, white Cad Red, of course both of them have white in it, but white Cad Red, maybe a bit more yellow and a bit of black, but obviously more white here. So I'm wanting a value change. And same thing over here, I've got more of a muted kind of violet, so this is the red, black, touch of yellow. And everything has all three in it. And when I do that, obviously, things have stayed real muted. But now I can decide where I want some stronger color. Some of the other things I did, put in some detail, like the ladder, this boat over here. But I wanted to get past just the big block end and get to some finish. Now, I want some stronger color. I'm going to get some stronger color back in here but more stronger color up in here. And I know as I do that, I'm getting away from all three colors. I'm gonna be using black and just a bit more yellow in the background trees. But I know if I get too much yellow, uh, it's gonna come forward and I don't have any red in this. It's a little lighter, it's too light. So I'm gonna add more black and yellow. And even though I'm using just two colors, one of them is black, so it's not gonna punch my color too much. And I don't wanna add the red to this because now I'm adding I want to try and punch up each area just a little bit. Now, if you can see the subtlety there. See, there's this is the cooler, all three, a little bit more black. This is just a bit more yellow, no red. So it pops just a little bit. It gives me two subtle values. I want to keep everything subtle in the background. Now I want to move to this, and I'm going to do the same, except I'm going to go black and yellow, a little stronger, a bit more yellow. Stronger meaning less white. White always kind of kills color. Add a touch of white to it now. So I'm going to add a real, a, a stronger yellow green than what I had because I'm not adding red to it. And just break up. And this is in the light area, so I don't want to lose my dark and light pattern there. And just give me a subtle. This is almost now becomes kind of a half tone. I've got my dark half tone, now the light. And again, this is towards the end, and you gotta not panic about how it looks in the block end. I mean, I want the values to read right, but I, I, in the back of my mind, I know I'm gonna punch the color just a bit more. Also, I'm getting this a bit thicker, so it stands out a bit. Now the other thing I want to do is sticking with, again, two colors. Everything has three, stays muted, so now I'm going to add red and yellow. Either go with a yellow-orange or a reddish-orange. I guess I could do orange-orange, but tertiary colors, the red-orange, yellow-orange is a bit more natural than just orange-orange. So this is a bit more, well, it's a bit more orange. I'm going to push and pull it and drag it a little bit. It's a little light. So I'm going to add more red. It'll become a red-orange now, keep it a bit darker. See, these are spots of color, and they really jump out. And I'm not worried about, well, this is, you know, summer. There really wouldn't be any red. Think about painting more for painting's sake rather than trying to be accurate with season. Now I want to jump to maybe some of these areas back in here. I don't have to punch everything with color, but this is going to be a straight one. I'm going to add a touch of yellow. Cad Red Deep, which is a little bit on the cool side, and a touch of yellow. I'm going to have this really pop out. Not the whole thing. I might come back with a bit of red with a little black. But have a little bit stronger color there. And same thing in here, a bit more of a orange, kind of a reddish orange. No black in it, but just a stroke or two. A little bit too yellow there. So I still have a lot of that gray roof left. Now I'm going to add some black to this yellow and a little bit of red, but it's still going to be a bit stronger right next to the shadow. So I want the shadow to pop a bit more on this house. Then I'll blend it away. It's a subtle value change from right where the shadow is to all the way down at the bottom. Value and a little bit of intensity. I'm going to get some red and just a touch of white in it. Color there for no other reason than just to have color. I guess I could turn it into a flower pot or something. Same thing down here. I want a little red and orange. And let's put something right 
there. It's just a bit stronger color. And on these fishing boats, this was in Greece, a lot of them had these red bowies or buoys. Or, so I'm going to stick one in there. Now usually with my sketchbook, I'm you know doing thumbnails before I'm painting where I'm at. And I'll also take notes in there of things I think I can add to a painting. One of them is something like that. Now it does need a darker value right in here. So I do want to, I'm rendering this thing now and create a little form in there. A bit too dark or too black. And then the reverse, so it's still slightly lighter of a highlight right there. On something round, the highlight's never on the edge. Because then it's not round anymore, it's flat. The highlight has to be off the edge, more slightly towards the center. And I could get, you know, more color just, again, just for the sake of color. Just a stroke or two. I might knock down that bottom part of the boat that's red. A little bit of white and black. Then the rest of it, if I need some little subtle value changes, color changes underneath here. I can get too much color change because of my limited palette here, but I do want a few lines, some edges. Let's do a... I see some rope down in here, so I'm going to put the rope up here. So I'm going to get a little... I always scratch out a little bit with the edge of the brush first. So let's go with a rope up to there. I want that rope to be sunlit near the top. So I'll get some white, a little bit of yellow, right there. I guess it could be sunlit the whole way. Problem being too careful, it never gets that big swoop that makes it look uh, a little more natural. And if a little bit looks good, then a whole bunch should probably look great, which is never true. But it does break it up. Same thing with the little railings that are on here. And I got to be careful. Well, thing is, I don't want to be real careful because then it looks stiff. But I want it to be kind of accurate. It does need some detail. I don't have any color in here that's making it pop. So a little bit of detail in here. I don't know what that would be, but it needs some shapes up in here. Smokestack. These little dots and dashes on top, whether they're pipes or antennas or... And it could be stuff that they're working with. It just kind of breaks it up and adds a sense of sense of detail to it. But I've stretched the color, I think now, from just the everything having black, yellow, and red in it to just a few areas having stronger color. One more in here and I'll quit. I want a little bit of orange, straight orange, no black, right on this piece of wood here. Make it pop a little bit warmer. But once you get the values in there, and that was way too muddy, once you get values in there that work, you can change color all day long. Because it's easy to scrub in a little bit of color, keep it the right value, the same value, and it'll work pretty good. So that's why we want to focus on value first, and this helps us to do this. I could even now, if I wanted, I got a little ultramarine blue with a touch of red, and then I could come in here and get a blue barrel. And this is ultramarine blue with a touch of the cad red. Now really that jumps out pretty good because everything else is black, yellow, and red. There's some cerulean blue over there. So now I can start cheating all I want. But at some point I lose the harmony. So a little bit of it though I think works pretty good. If I want to scrub a little violet and a shadow or two that would uh, pop things. But the shadow here is mostly white and black. But because of not having blue anywhere else, except for these two small areas, that's going to read as blue. And again, I can focus on value a lot more.